Ladies and gentlemen, I can't really wait to introduce to you our keynote speaker, who, uh, who also, with, with a special emphasis, who is a regular contributor of articles to uh, various management magazines and a regular contributor to the HRM Nepal, that is Nepal's first HR magazine. He's a regular columnist in there. And uh, our keynote speaker helps senior leaders in organizational transformation through strategy, people, and culture, AI, and tech solutions. He has been a business and HR leader with many large organizations and groups and is recognized for the impact that he brings through thought leadership, strategy, and execution excellence. He is the founder of Orbit Shift, a coaching and consulting practice, and an entrepreneur at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming up on stage our keynote speaker, Mr. Sai Kumar Chandran. Good. So it's lovely to be here. Thank you, Mohanji, and the entire team of Growth Sellers for hosting me here. I'm going to try and create a little bit of interaction amongst all of you. Uh, there's a very interesting topic that I'm going to talk about, and there are many facets of what impacts us and our life that we'll talk about. But I want all of you to be interactive through this session. Are we good for that? Yeah. Awesome. So some of the best informed and educated minds are not thinking about today. Two questions that all of us need to answer every single day. And when I refer to the world, the world that essentially is not just Earth, that's my country, that's my society, that's my family, that's my organization, that's anything that could define my immediate world. In about the next one hour, we will talk deeply about this concept, and I want you to scribble down thoughts that come to you. Because this conversation that I'm having with you, I want each one of you to take this conversation and have these with as many people as possible. Is that a commitment? Yes? All those people who said we want to make the world a better place. So please have this conversation with others exactly the same way as I am having this with you. So with those two questions in mind, let's use a, an image to think about this. And I'm going to talk about the summary of my entire talk, and then I'm going to go to the subject at hand. Imagine now, with all those good intentions, growing, wanting to do better, contributing to the world, this is us any one of us wanting to do things. And imagine if the world around us is like this. What's happening? What's happening? Louder, please. Chaos. OK. What else is happening? Confusion. What else is happening? Sorry? Sure, unstructured. What else? Disturbances. OK, what else? Conflicts. And what does that do to our quality of life? Degrades? Absolutely sure? Beautiful. That's the reason why I chose to talk about the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Because there is this chaos that we are living in. And there is chaos not just from our immediate families, but the society, the nation, the world. We know at least five conflicts that are happening in the world at this point in time. The whole talk between uh, about Ukraine and Russia, the COVID crisis, economy, tons of those things happening. Now, if this is degrading the quality of our life, let's look at another way of living our life. What if we were doing this? How would this change our lives? I'll play that back for you. What if we were creating very strong identities for ourselves? What if we were having clarity? What if we had focus? How would it change things? I want you to write this down for yourself. Ask yourself this question. If I have a lot more of identity, a lot more of clarity, a lot more of focus, what would that do? If I have a lot more of connections, if I have a lot more of contracts and contributions, what would that do for us? If I have a lot of meaningful messaging, and if I'm contributing, if I'm being a model to the world, how will it change? 
How will it change? Can I have some answers? Quickly. How will it change? Sorry. Oh, there's a change within, definitely. And as that change within happens, what will happen? There's a chance that we can contribute to less chaos around us, obviously. What else? What else? We can become better influencers, definitely. Others? Can I have some other answers from the back of the room, please? Quickly. Quick ones, come on. Uh, you'll have to be a bit louder. Sure, a proactive approach, okay. What else? What else will happen? How will our world change? So let me pause here. I want you to get up again, and I want you to find a couple of people to speak with. And I want you to ask that if we change the way we are living, and if we do these three things, the three circles, how will it change our world? Please, can I have all get up and talk to somebody who you don't know again. Talk to a total stranger. Ask this question. <laughs> so, you know, very soon, Wi-Fi is almost going to become life-fi for some of us. Yeah? So, without the Wi-Fi, we feel lifeless, many of us. Yeah. Well, in some senses, yes, that's the chaos also that's happening. But because we have so much access to technology, people are becoming virtual for us. Yes, indeed. So, there's a bunch of trends that I would like to call out for us. If you see, there's a lot more of technology around us in today's world as against what was there earlier. There's also a lot more of knowledge and information flow where we are, wherever we are in this world. In fact, some of us saw this that even during the COVID times, universities, schools, education continued for most parts of the world, obviously where there was a telecommunications access. And if it was not there, then it was a problem. Uh, there is also this uh, uh, connectedness that we have with our loved ones from wherever. There was a time when you used to wait for messages, letters, etc. But today you can literally reach out people from anywhere, everywhere, at any given point in time. There's also that whole real-time sense to the whole world. We get, come to know of things almost about as soon as it happens, provided you're paying attention to what is happening around there. And then uh, a lot of transactions per day, a whole bunch of uh, different things that organizations are doing today. And there's a significant amount of change that is happening out there. And lastly, there's also this opportunity that we have today. Almost anything that is a human need also has business sense attached to it. How many of you have seen this happen? Yeah? Several kinds of new services that are coming up to meet human needs. And this is one of the greatest opportunities of the times that we're living in. That almost every single human opportunity is getting converted into a business need. And lastly, humans feel that they need a lot more. Is there a feeling like this? Yes? Yes? And because those last two things are there, that almost every human need is getting converted into a business. And then because humans need a lot more, businesses are thriving. Economies are growing. Money is circulating a lot better than possibly there was. I'm not sure if COVID had happened about 30 years back, how severe would have been the impact of that, I guess, against today, when there were still people out there helping, trying to get things done, you know, getting groceries to medicines to so many other things to be out there available to people even when they were locked down at homes. So much has changed in this world. But despite all of this, in this world today, there's a whole host of chaos out there and a whole host of opportunity. I will call out a few of these opportunities which are really changing the world and the chaos out there which is really creating problems for all of us. Please make a note of some of these things because when you start having conversations about the TODAV world, which is the concept I'm going to introduce, you will need to think about some of these things, right? So in line with whatever we were talking about, there is an opportunity for us to build a better future, yes? And we have access to technology today using which we can improve the world. How many of us have seen this? Yes? Technology today to take care. How many of you, does anybody drive an electric vehicle here? An EV? Anyone yet? Or anybody whose families own? Yeah, couple of us there. So you see technology like this is coming up so that we can uh, you know, change the situation with pollution in our cities and so many other things. There is 
technology to manage garbage and technology to manage so many diseases. So all of us are trying to build a better world and that's an opportunity which is there. The world is a lot more connected like we were speaking. There is a balance in many things which were very imbalanced at an earlier point in time. Like more than ever, as much as you hear of challenges on human rights, there is so much more of activism that has succeeded on human rights and people are doing so much better. So for almost all negative news that you hear, there are four or five or six things which are happening which are very good in this world. Many times we don't hear it because we're not paying attention to that. Similarly, there's a lot of platforms to share opinions. Many of you, us youngsters, are sharing opinions. Where do you share your opinions? What platforms? Insta. <laughs> Almost unanimously Insta. Okay, what else? Twitter, okay. Others, Facebook, yeah. Uh, you, you're forgetting one of the most common place where you keep sharing your opinions, WhatsApp. Yeah, how many of you have WhatsApp on your phone? Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> WhatsApp is being used by more people than possibly Insta or any of these others. And see, that's where constantly you're sharing your point of views, okay. Now, there's also this uh, opportunity for many people to contribute at one point in time, uh, individuals are not even thinking of working in social sectors, in NGOs, etc. Today, tons of youngsters are moving that place. Mid-career people are moving out of their careers and beginning to contribute to the world. So those are all changes which are happening. Similarly, learning avenues are immense. How are some of you learning other than the formal learning today? What avenues do you use? What avenues? Okay, Kindle, what else? LinkedIn learning, okay? Okay, yeah. So tons of those opportunities exist which possibly didn't exist. About 15 years back, in fact, let's go back to about 25, 30 years when uh, I was just about getting out of college. At that point in time, if you had to learn something new, you necessarily have to have that interesting card. What is that card? <laughs> library card, yeah? So if you didn't have access to your library card and if you by chance lost your library card, it was a nightmare back then when I was growing up. Yeah, today you don't need that library card. The world is a library at your fingertips. And thanks to Google, right? How many of you Google things, right? Yeah, it's very interesting. I was having this conversation with a doctor friend of mine. He says, invariably, 99% of the patients have Googled everything about themselves and then they come, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, so, so I was asking, so what then? He says, you know, doctors are beginning to have an identity crisis now. <laughs> so interesting things are happening out there in this world. Similarly, uh, indeed, people are moving up the economic order. As much as we hear about wars and famines and deaths and isolation in society, invariably the truth is also there are more and more people moving up the so-called standards of society now. Question is who defines those standards? That's another debate for another day. But definitely people are doing much better. How many of us have seen these happening in from the native places that we are coming? People are doing much better? Yes? Yeah? Absolutely. Now while all of this is happening, there's a bunch of problems that's happening in the world today. Let's focus, pay attention to that. And just some questions. How many of you around you seen suicide rates increasing? Yes? There are many people who are worried about money continuity of income, yes? So all of these things are happening, and here are a few trends that I've been seeing continuously from the places that I work. To begin with, things are collapsing for no reason. Suddenly there was a beautiful brand, a big company, doing very well, and then another day, it just vanishes, right? We've heard so many higher and fire stories about brands in the recent times. Without taking any names, some of these are very scary at times, and it's not just companies which are collapsing economies which are collapsing, right? Today there are at least three to four com countries out there which are facing severe challenges and some of us have grappled with these challenges. Similarly, people are taking more vacations, more going out, weekend trips, but still they are unhappy, right? True? Yeah, I, I can hear true coming from the crowd. So it looks like there is a vacation crowd here which in spite of the vacation is unhappy. Ask why does that happen? And that's the chaos in the world today. Similarly, the, a lot of people are feeling purposeless. And I've heard this very commonly that I don't like what I'm doing, let me find another job. People find that job, 
six, eight, 12 months. I can see some people hiding and laughing there. So it <laughs> looks like it's appealing to the trend. What happens when you change the job? Again, you feel purposeless. There is this whole movement happening in the world saying find purpose, find purpose, find purpose. But maybe somebody didn't stop you and told you that the first place where you need to find purpose is where you are with whatever you have. How many of us are actually even taking care of what is in our hands as against tossing it and going out and looking for some bigger purpose? It's a big problem in the world today. All right. Now, if some of you are interested, you can go to my YouTube channel. There's a video that I posted a few years back that while you look for purpose, please don't make these mistakes. Take a look at that video. And I've spoken about elaborately about this problem, which is there with not just youngsters, but people in middle age, people in late age. And there is so much of crisis happening out there because of that. Another thing, there's a lot more of isolation. Now, imagine we are connected on one end and we are still isolated. Why? Because the virtual person is becoming so much more important than the real person, right? Are there friends and family that you have spoken to just half an hour back, but you've not seen for months? Yes? And that's where isolation is coming. There are times when you're sitting in the house with your entire family and everyone is on a device. And people are not interacting. There are times when I've seen some of my friends and their families they're messaging each other from one room to another. I mean, that could be the heights of isolation that you go through. But yes, that's the truth of the society today. And then we are further away from oneness. The world is getting divided. There are challenges. There are speculations. There are fights. There is also this feeling of meaninglessness that a lot of people are carrying, right? So not just purpose, but even meaning is missing in whatever things are and people are doing. And Lastly, all of this is leading us where? To a lot of unsatisfied uh, people around us. So that's the world that we are living in. And that's why I asked all of you to ask this question. Now go back to the question that I asked you, which is feelings of safety and un, you know, feeling of lack of safety. So a lot of those things will be related to where these are. Are you with me on this? Yes? Now. As youngsters, as young minds, as responsible people in this society, as people working in the organized sector, my encouragement to all of you is begin paying attention to some of these things that are happening. While there are those green things which are good, there are these red things which need to be tackled, which are immediate problems of our society. And if this is the chaos that is out there, the world, and this is the TODAF that I was talking about, the world today is becoming a lot more of transactional. It is a lot more opportunistic. It's a lot more divisive and getting divided continuously. And it is so much more antsy, agitated, restless. People are not getting along with each other. And at the end of it, what's happening, everything is too variable, constantly changing, non-predictable, it is at a point where things are crashing, literally, at the drop of a hat. And this is what the world today needs to draw its attention to faster than anything else. Every single individual is responsible for this. Now, this is not a problem of governments or, 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 or institutions or of people in responsible positions. This is the problem of every single individual on Earth. Because nobody else is making us transactional. Who's making us transactional? We are. Who's making us opportunistic? We are. Who's letting others divide us? We are. Who's choosing to stay antsy and not solve that problem? It's us. And at the end of it, if the world is variable and you break that down, who is really variable? Ask yourselves this question. How many of us are unpredictable in our lives? We are? Yes. And some of us have got that feedback from our loved ones and around us. So the world is but an image of everything. And you know what? The whole is sometimes greater than the sum of the parts. So when we have millions of us who are living like this, the world becomes so much more of a challenging place to live in for everybody else. Okay? How many of you are willing to take responsibility of this? Yes? Want to do something? 
And that's where you begin to start changing the world if you realize some of these things. Let me take you a little deeper into what each one of these things means, so just so that you understand absolutely correctly. So what's the transactional world? The transactional world is busier than ever. We have a long list of things to do. Things just don't complete. We are running all around. And the biggest one, FOMO. I'm sure I don't need to share what FOMO means to the uh, Insta generation that is sitting out here. Everybody thinks that there's something that we're missing out on, right? When was the last time a new pub opened in town and you rushed to it, right? So I don't even have to say that possibly you're wanting to be there the day one, day two, day three, maybe the first week. So that's how the FOMO world is. So the opportunistic world and then is becoming a race. So the more you get stuck in transactions, the more opportunistic you become. The more you want to maximize, get the most out of everything, you're trying to inch out the maximum benefit from everything. And last but not the least, this makes us so random that sometimes even the best stimuli is failing. Product loyalty is not there. Brand loyalty is not there. You're choosing, trying to make the best of everything that there is. Uh, how many of us heard about uh, the great resignation? Have you read articles? Yes, many of us. And many of us in HR have dealt with problems like these. Where is all of that coming from? That's coming from an intensely opportunistic workforce out there. Many of us are contributing to that. Think, how can I change that? The divisiveness, and then what happens as every individual becomes more opportunistic and transactional, there is a bunch of people out there ready to divide us. Everyone is trying to come out and tell you, do this, <coughs> you'll be better. Do that, you'll be better. How many of you have gone to a bookstore recently? Bookstore? Yeah, many of us? Okay, next time you visit a bookstore, take a look at this. Which is the biggest section of books that you'll find? Any ideas? Sorry? Self-help. Okay, so actually it is religion and spirituality mostly, the first category. The second category is self-help, all right? Now walk into the self-help section. Invariably, of all the books which are there, about 40, 50% of the books will tell you how to make a million dollars in six months. Yes? Yeah? Forget about that part. Look at the other part of the books. Again, another 40, 50% of the books will be telling you how to deal with yourself because you can't make a million dollars in six months. So what's the world doing? When we become opportunistic, there are people ready to divide us. They will challenge us. They will bring the worst out of us. And that's where it's important for each one of us, minds, beautiful minds sitting here, to take notice of this and say, I need to stop. I need to do something else. I need to change my approach. What that is, we will get to in some time. But what is ANSI? And as people divide us, what happens to us? We become restless. We start fighting. We start getting anxious and everything then becomes into a negative loop of things. And invariably what happens, you don't pay attention to the three, four, five good things that are happening around you. What do you pay attention to? The negatives. An unfortunate truth in this world today is for every negative thing that is happening, there are five to six good things that are happening. Most of us are not paying attention to this. And that's the reason why we are becoming more and more and more antsy every single day. And which is where we are making others antsy around us. So please start looking at the blessings of your life. Yeah? Like a simple blessing. How long have you been sitting in this room? How long? An hour? About an hour? Yeah? Power's not gone off. Nobody's invaded the room. The roof is still up there. You don't need to look there. <laughs> It'll stay there. Yeah? All of these are good things, but we're just not paying attention to this. You're thinking about, what's that friend of mine doing? What's that, I mean, poor boss of mine doing, right? Or what are they doing? What's that thing? What's that conflict? When will that collapse happen? That's where people's thoughts are. So that negative thinking is all coming from this antsiness that we are living in. And that makes the world an extremely variable, challenged, and unsettled place for us. Scary? 
Scary? Yes? Who's creating it? So if any of you raised your hands and said, I want to make the world a better place, first own this place that we have created. This is the garbage that we are collecting as human beings today. And this is the garbage that we need to come out of. Is there a way? Is there a way? Yes? Is there a unanimous yes? Awesome. So let's explore that. And let's explore how we can improve the quality of life that this Todav is creating for us. Yeah? So what's the antidote for us? Antidote is beginning to ask questions like this. How do I be clear about things? How can I develop clarity? How can I be logical about things? How can I be uh, finding a little bit more of peace? What's the direction that I need to move into? How do I change my responses? How do I not get carried away? How do I not lose my head when others are losing their head? How do I help the world around me? Those are some questions that we would need to ask. I want all of us to get up again for the last five minutes now. And the questions that are on the screen, I again want you to find somebody who you don't know, a complete stranger, and see how many of those questions that you can answer for your life. I'll pause here for about five minutes, please. Can I have all of you move around? Quickly, find someone new, please. Someone totally new, a stranger, and try to get this perspective from them. And a catalyst. So here is a little bit of food for thought of what is in our control and what can be better. Today, the world that we live in, what you intake is completely in your control, right? And I'll invite you to write down these factors and think about these. How can I control the news that I consume? How can I control what I read? How can I control a little bit more of what I hear? Right? There's tons of content out there. Not all of it may be real. Not all of it may be true. Not all of it may be really helpful to who you are, where you are. Most importantly, not all of it may actually have been created by an expert who's an authority in that field. Is this making sense? Right? So next time you're reading, you're understanding, you're listening to something, one of the first questions that you need to ask is, is this person really an expert? Is this person really real? Or is this person somebody who, because they have an opinion, they're just expressing that opinion? And that's one dangerous thing that's happening in our world today, that we are listening to too many opinions instead of real facts about things. So while you control your intake, the other thing that you could look at is controlling your curiosity, being curious. How many of us sitting in this room are curious? Yeah, I can see about 50% hands going up. How many of you are purposefully curious that you want to learn and become better? Okay, even lesser hands are going up now. Now, this is again another problem that a lot of us have, and I'll leave that word with you, being purposefully curious. How can we do that? How can we ask this, that whatever I do, that 5, 10, 15 minutes that I spend on Insta, actually it's much more than that, right? So whatever time I spend on Insta or Facebook or any of the other platforms, nothing wrong with using these platforms. Is that making me better? Am I looking for things that will improve my life or am I just cluttering my head? How many of you go there to check the likes on your message? Or to check the likes on the rival's message? useless pursuit of your time. If you really want assurance, be kind to somebody in real life. Create value somewhere in real life. Those likes that you get on some of these platforms are worthless, really. They're not telling you anything at all, right? Because if somebody wanted to really give you a feedback, they would have written out a message for you. Have you noticed this? That many of us, and on certain messages, you will see 100,000, a few uh, lakh, a few million likes, but you'll find very few messages there. Somebody who genuinely wants to give you a kudos will give you a message, not that thumbs up. Think about it this the next time. What can you do to control your consistency? 
Can you show up as a good person, consistent person? How many of you exercise here? Very few. How many of you exercise consistently? Okay, let me ask you this nice question. How many of you spend money on that Nike, Reebok shoe, etc., and you're not going running? <laughs> now hands will go up, yeah? So, you know where consistency is lacking, right? You, you go buy those expensive clothes or those branded products to really say, I'm going to focus on my fitness, but really don't do anything about it. New Year resolution, birthday resolution, some other resolution, somebody talks to you, then a resolution. But where are all those resolutions? Sorry? <laughs> Particularly that one. Isn't it? Particularly the New Year. There are some people who actually wait for the New Year's Eve so that they can change. <laughs> then the only thing that changes is the calendar. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> then they again wait for the next year. Right? Uh, then there are those who will say, this time, this is the last time I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> so all of that. So please bring a little bit more consistency to your life rather than throwing all of this time away. See, frankly, you and I have met here on, on this particular day, on 29th of April, 2022. Even if you don't change your life, 10 years down the line, if God's gracious, our life will still be there. But ask this question, that if for these 10 years, you were to do something consistently for yourself every single day, would your life be better? That's what you need to think about. Forget about the time that's gone by. Forget about anything else. But look at the time that's in front of you. If every day, half an hour, you were to take out for yourself and be consistent, see how your life will change. And that's what you need to do instead of saying, I have no time. And this is becoming a common excuse for a lot of us. Right? Take some time out from the social media activities that you do, some wasteful pursuits that you do. Right? Trying to half sleep. Uh, what's, what's one of the biggest hobbies in this world? No, no, it's not sleeping. No, one of the, you know, so all the, all the best video games in this world will have lesser popularity than the game of snooze snooze. Imagine how life would be if the snooze button was taken away. <laughs> right? Okay. Be in control of your change. Be in control of it. Ask, what do I need to change? What do I need to improve? How do I need to do better? The COVID crisis shook up a lot of people and they decided that I want to do something else in my life, not just be in the profession that I am. There are many people who developed a second, third interest. They're developing capabilities. They have set up timeline for yourself. What's your plan? How are you changing for your future? And this change is not about wanting to own a house or buy the next big car or something else. This change is really, how do you become a better person out there? And be in control of your choices in that change. Be in control of your own senses, of what you see, what you understand. Because when you get into control of those choices and those senses, your senses, you will have a better chance to do a lot more with your life. And then choose how much distance you keep from things. Right? There are times that you need to have positive distance from things. And there are times when you need to have a negative distance from things. Right? Now, here's something that happened to most of us while we were growing up. Did you have your parents tell you that stay away from those people, they're not good for your life? Have you heard this? Consistently, all of us. And then people say there is generational difference. There is no generational difference. Every parent says that to every child. But look at the other way around. How many of us realize that there are some people who are not good for our lives, but we are still with them? Happens? Almost all of us sitting here have those people in our life we are refusing to distance ourselves from. We are continuing to suffer. Why? On the other hand, all of us know we are getting distant from some people in our life. Yes? But we are not doing anything for that distance. We are not reducing that distance, knowing very clearly that if we continue like this, that distance is going to eat up that relationship. But we are not doing anything about it. We are continuing to remain transactional. Why? Why does this happen? 
that there are some relationships into which we are smoking in time and not getting anything out of it and some relationships which would really improve our life we are not giving it time that's a lack of consistency the choices our senses not being in control that is us not having the right insights in life that is us not practicing engagement with our own life that is us not owning up our own journey we are being at the mercy of others we are being at the mercy of whatever things are which are happening in our life my invitation to all of you you have a brilliant life ahead of you whatever the number of years 10 15 20 30 40 50 50 whatever the number of years you have can you own your journey that's a question that you need to ask that's a question that you need to answer how many of you want to own up your journey yes you want to make it a better journey then why aren't you doing it why won't you do it what are you waiting for whose invitation are you waiting for to change your own journey you don't need anybody's invitation yeah okay so what can help you with this todab world here is something coming from my experience and what i've been talking to with people and this is across the globe that i've been talking to people from all age groups consistently from 20 year olds all the way to 60 70 year olds the category that i work with and a lot of children young children that i work with one of the biggest things that can help us with our life today more than ever are these three things values culture and tradition in fact yesterday i was having a very interesting question with uh, mohan ji from uh, grotsela and mohan ji and i were talking about how the tradition of marriage has gone through so many changes in the recent times right about 15 20 25 years back the constructs of marriages in most of our societies used to be 5 6 7 10 day affair maybe even a month long affair yeah some of us seen those but what is it today it's becoming more of a cocktail party most of us don't even stop to realize that those rituals those traditions that used to be practiced they used to create positive energy right uh, talk to many minds not just young minds but even people in their middle or late age you talk to them about subjects like astrology you talk to about them about scriptures about our ancient texts about chanting they will raise a eyebrow on you and say that's superstition really really is it superstition there's a science behind most of those things which we don't realize so my encouragement to all of you here while you are running your corporate race to become a vp and something and something and something else first stop and understand have you even owned up your own culture your own family's traditions how many of you when you were growing up had a temple in your house raise your hands your parents had a temple in your house yes most of them respect is that it see this is where culture is mutating there are some strange english words which are coming and replacing the understanding of our culture the act of joining your hand was at one point in time symbolic of me or you or any of us bowing to the divine in the other that is what it meant everybody used to believe that there is divine in the other person i'll give you a contrasting belief if your foot touches somebody what do you do you do this right so if you're doing that without really remembering what's the understanding and that's remembering an act and not remembering the tradition is it making sense so one of my biggest invitations to all of you is please don't get lost in your corporate race go back to your culture your tradition the the country that you live in the society that you live in has a beautiful history does it have yes sure absolutely confident how many of you know in and out of it how many of you are owning up this tradition do that it will make a great difference to your life it will prevent people from outside coming and telling you what you should be doing it will prevent people from teaching you english word respect this is not respect 
This is bowing to the divine, right? It'll teach you the real essence of what it is. So that's one of my first invitations. Are you with me, everyone? Yeah? So please do something about this. And then you need to develop informed families, informed friends. You need to have a lot more purposeful living, choosing things, not just alone. Remember, if you're going to be alone in dealing with what you're dealing with, you're going to struggle. You need people around you. And one of the simplest places where you find people around you are who? Friends and family. How much are you investing in friends and family? How many of us have quality dialogues with our families? Yeah? Some of us. Many don't. Many don't have the time. Right? These days we have a concept of weekend families. Family is only seen on weekends. Or you have vacation families. When you take a vacation, you are the safest with your family, so you vacation with them. Other than that, where is family? What are you doing with that family? Ask yourselves these questions, right? Many of us sitting here have cousins that we have not even spoken to in a long time. Just the two previous generations, ask your fathers, grandfathers, mothers, grandmothers, how close were they to their cousins? Were they close? Where are we losing our roots? Some of us don't even know how big our family trees are. Does anyone know their family tree here? How many people are there in their family? Hardly any hands would go up now. Just a generation back, people knew this. Why? Why are we losing family? Why? We're losing family because there is Insta, followers. Yes? What are those followers doing for us? Will your followers pray for you? Think about it. What are you trading? And then, professional fraternities. Many of you, how many of you are engineers in this room? Engineers, anybody? Commerce graduates? Science graduates? Right? HR professionals? Oh, the maximum. <laughs> okay, so these are all professional fraternities. Become a part of such professional fraternities. Come for conversations. Learn, exchange. Those are things that will help you. And definitely, you will need a bunch of guides and mentors. People who can share things with you which will shift your life. How many of you have a mentor in life? Can I see your hands up? Mentor? Less than 2% in the room. Less than 2%. Find a mentor in life, my friends. Find somebody who can challenge you to the core. Somebody who's been there, done things. Somebody who you will listen to. Don't think that what will a person 20, 30 years elder to me teach me. My generation is different. Actually, how many of us want growth in this room? Respect? Yeah? Money? Comforts? Yes? That's what your previous generation also wanted. There's nothing different. It's just that you want it faster than them. They were ready to wait till their 50s to get it. You're not ready to wait for your 30s to get it. Simple difference. But find a mentor. You will highly likely progress. Are we good? Any questions on this? Right? These are things that I'm going to encourage you to do in your life so that your lives can be better six months, 12 months, 18 months down the line. Do these things and you'll see how your life changes for the better. And you'll have so much more of meaning, so much less of the chaos that's happening around you in this world. So just picking up, I spoke about the Todav world the transactional, opportunistic, divisive, ANSI, variable world. So as much as I call that out to make meaning, my way of making meaning of how to stay out of the Todav world is this, that become mindful, become inquisitive, become deep, right? Become assured and become sensitive, sensible. That's my invitation to all of you young, brilliant minds. If you can do these five things, become a lot more mindful, become a lot more inquisitive, become deep in your lives, really deep, experts in life. Become really, really grounded and become self-assured. You don't need to have those likes to make you feel good. That is being assured. You don't need others to tell you you're doing well in life. You know it. You don't need to have milestones achieved to know 
that you are a real worthy human being. You don't crave for attention from that partner who's not giving you attention. That is being assured. You don't have to wait for the promotion to tell you you're doing a good job. You already know that you're doing a good job. That is being assured. So when you become mindful, inquisitive and deep, you will become assured. And if you are an assured human being, you will become sensible. Is it making sense? There is a solution. And the solution is us. And that's what the world needs to do today. Every single individual, every single human being, so that the people who are dividing us cannot divide us anymore. Together we can. And that's what we need to remember. Okay? So just some quick details for you. What is being mindful? It's being present. It's being healthy. It is being thoughtful. It is being deliberately thoughtful. Inquisitive is about wanting to know the truth, especially wanting to believe only that which can be verified. <coughs> How many of you send forwards? Yes, you do? Facebook, Insta, WhatsApp. How many times do you verify those forwards before you send them? Rarely, no? Think about why we do that. Some of us may, others may not. Okay, what is being deep? Being deep is about practicing, being purposeful, changing in time, knowing what we need to change, right? And being assured is being systematic, understanding things, being focused. Right? And lastly, being sensible is about leaving this place a better world than we find it. Leaving everything better than we ever found it. Like in this conference, you can ask this yourselves this question. Everyone that I speak with, am I leaving that person, that human being, a better human being than I found that person to be? That's an inquiry to make. Helps? Is Miraz clear to all of us? Cool. So, how do you live this? Now, here are simple tips for you. Ultimately, all of you have to go back to an organization, to a society, to your families and do things. How do you create this change from here on, from everything that I said? Some simple steps for all of you. As an individual, as a citizen, what can you do? You can talk about Todav to everybody. You can talk about Midas to everybody. You can practice it consciously. Leave everything better than you found it. Stay away from chaos. As much as possible, stay away from it. And here is the most important thing that I want to leave with all of you with respect to today's world, that just because you have an opinion, please don't think it is the good or right opinion to give. Please stop giving opinions. Verify your opinion. If your opinion is scientific, if your opinion is grounded in values, ethics, and traditions, if your opinion is going to leave the world a better place, then give that opinion. Otherwise, we will continue contributing to the chaos around us. And that's what we can do as a citizen. And as a leader in an organization, what do you do? You do some very simple things. Number one, talk about this. Create awareness. Make the transition yourself. Stop living the Todav life. Come to a Midas life. Live the Midas life as much as possible. And then help others to do that. And choose a purpose that you can work with. Most of you in business and HR can influence the purpose of the organization. Create more of a change from there. And last but not the least, stay away from anything that is shallow, anything that will create a challenge. Simple steps that you can practice once you've understood this. Okay? And lastly, what can HR leaders do in this? Create conversations. And that's one of the first things that I shared with you, that as I have conversed with you on this, please go back and create this conversation. If you want our help in creating, please reach out to us. We'll help you create these conversations. But create these conversations so that others can understand these truths. And then, once you create those conversations, focus and steer the opinion in the positive direction. Steer people towards living a Midas life. And continuously do that. HR can make the difference in the organizations. Build awareness and build capability so that the organization really changes and becomes positive. That's what you do. So as a citizen, as a business leader, as HR, you can play different roles. 
and you can play very constructive and very powerful roles. Helps? Yeah? And lastly, as we move forward, it all comes down to being a responsible leader. And this is the framework that I've been working with for last many, many years based on tons of years of research. I've worked with more than a few lakh people in my life now uh, in various capacities as a business, HR and responsible uh, and a leader. And this is my discovery that any leader, any responsible leader will do five things at any given point in time. Number one, he or she will develop themselves. Always, continuously develop themselves, never becoming outdated, no matter what you're doing, no matter what profession you are in. Even if you were a simple person living a retired life or living the life of a housewife or a house help or whatever, you will develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Second thing, you will rally others around. You'll take people along, you'll never divide. You'll combine people, you'll connect people. And whatever your contributions are, you'll make sure that they are all building a progressive culture around you, in your family, in your organizations. You will continuously focus on building ethical practices, value-driven practices, tradition, culture. You'll continuously ensure that. And ensuring sustainability in things, taking care of environment, taking care of everything that you can contribute that can build a better life. That's what essentially you'll be doing. And that's being a responsible leader. And you don't have to have some designation in an organization to be a leader. You can be a leader in your own right, wherever you are, whoever you are. Yes, agree to that? Can you be a leader? In your country, in your society? Yes? And that's a resolve that we need to have all of you contribute positively to Nepal, to this region, to this globe. For all you know, 10 years down this line, some of you may be living in some other country, doing something better. You may be doing something really good for Nepal. Whichever way, wherever you are, be a responsible leader. Be a responsible leader within the closed doors of your home. Do better there. That's my appeal to all of you. And I'm very conscious as I say all of these things that it is not going to be easy. I'm not telling you that. I'm only telling you that it's going to be worth it. That's what I'm telling you. None of this is going to be easy, but it's definitely going to be worth it if you do it. You will pride yourselves if you do this. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We can take questions, yes. Yes, please. Whatever, if uh, all of you can write down your questions and pass on to our volunteers, that's sure. the easiest so that we can read it. Yes, yeah. please. Okay. It's a lot of questions, sir. Uh, nice to meet you. Good morning. I'm Susesh Bhaidya from Sanya Bank Limited. Uh, I just want to know your view on this. Is it good to maintain certain distance from people to maintain healthy and uh, sustainable relationship? Sure. So uh, it's an important question that all of us need to learn, in a point that all of us need to live in, uh, learn in our lives. Boundaries are good, always. You need to choose your boundaries and you need to keep your boundaries wherever you are, within families, within organizations, within society. Anything that is boundaryless will end up creating chaos for you at some point in time. Helps? And when you bring boundaries, you bring conscious, chosen distance. Distance hurts relationships when they come without choice. You know, automatic distance. Distance comes when people build silence, violence around them. That distance is not good. But a distance that's created by chosen boundaries, always good. Okay? Thank you. All right. Other questions? Other questions? Other questions? Please save Hello? time, save time, yes, yes please. Uh, 
so my question is, uh, so many of the times uh, in the organization, what happens is when there is a change in a policy or the strategic changes, uh, many things are uh, uh, misinterpreted. So uh, like the things will not like be uh, that uh, which you actually mean to be. So uh, how to deal with such kind of situations? Sure. Uh, lovely question. And this is one question that keeps coming up time and again when I'm interacting with leaders and businesses. See, there are two things that all of us need to understand. That whenever we are dealing with people, everybody's understanding is going to be different about different things. Agree? Right? Yes. Now, the way to counter that, number one, is to include people in design, especially in an organization when you're designing policies, when you're designing change, when you're designing structures, when you're designing any sort of communication, take people along, check on the messaging, do ideation, understand everybody's needs. If you've done this, you'll highly likely get your design right, number one. Number two is dialogues. First time, second time, there is a chance that people may misinterpret, misunderstand, because words mean different things. And whatever language we are communicating in the language, the words itself can mean different things for people coming from different regions. Happens again? So how do you eliminate that? Dialogue. A dialogue is a process of continuous conversations where you resolve whatever differences that come up. So keep these two things in mind. Design and dialogue. If you take these two principles along, whatever the change might be, even if it's an organization-wide transformation that you're doing, you will get better results. All right? Thank you. Others? Yes, uh, hello, Sai, sir. Good morning. Good where? morning, everyone. OK, where are you first? I'm here, sir. OK. The last, yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. So uh, first of all, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and sharing. Sure. Uh, I have a very simple question. Uh, you know, I need a suggestion. Uh, what What are your suggestions for young mind to be a good change maker? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so everything that I said today is in that direction. That absorb these kind of things and be a change maker. But here are my top three recommendations for everybody, not just young minds. Number one, in today's world we need to be better informed than we are. And when I say that, I consciously say this, that many of us are absorbing information from uh, not recognized or not correct platforms and believing that. So changing that, getting right factual information, that will be your first step of doing this. Number two, participating in a lot of dialogues with people who are better than you, more intelligent than you, more better informed, doing bigger things than you. That expands our mind, right? So insights, dialogue, and then formulate an opinion which is worthy of changing this world and leaving it a better place. So that's something that I would recommend to just about anybody, not just for young minds. Yeah? What's that? Thank the you way, so much. By the way, what determines the youth of the mind? <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> that's you. something that we want to think about, yeah? There are some 70-year-olds who are really young, and there are some 20-year-olds who possibly have nothing in their heads. So what is youth of the mind? That's a question we need to ask. All right, thank you. I, I think we had a question here on one of these tables, no? Yes. Oh, so thank you so much for the session, sir. Uh, the things you touched on were so deep, uh, they made me reflect on my own patterns. And um, my question is, so uh, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, getting the maximum benefit out of everything should not always be our approach. However, uh, in the society we live today, so uh, even educational institutions, what we have learned and, uh, in our workplaces, we are always expected and taught to get maxim maximum ba benefits out of things we do. So uh, this, you know, clashes with our values as well. So how do we sure. deal with this? How do we go about this? Okay. So two ways to understand this, like, Let's ask this. Do you have a hobby or an interest? What is the hobby or interest that you have? Can you get the mic back, for, please, for a moment? What's your hobby or interest that you have? Um, so I have uh, multiple hobbies. Uh, one I Give like me your highest, have. best, number one. Best. Uh, that would be uh, art. I like to, I'm not good at it, but I like to paint. Paint? Yeah. Awesome. Are you the best painter in the world? No. 
Would you like to be the best painter in the world? No. <laughs> it's a choice. Now, see, hidden in that answer is a value. And what is that? You're doing this for fun. You're doing this for joy. Okay. Now, let's say you have 20 friends around you who all keep saying that you're really good, you're really good, really good. You need to start competing. You need to start doing exhibitions. Can that take away your fun and joy? Yes, it does. So you understand the answer? So it's simple. If you make a choice to maximize something, choice, conscious choice, that your life is going to be better. If you say, I want to be the best artist in this world, and I want to make sure that my career is in art. I express myself to the world through art, or I express my world, myself to the world through running, or to piano, or through uh, medicine, or whatever that is, or mountaineering for that matter of fact, whatever it is. If you make a choice to maximize, it's a wonderful choice. But if the society is forcing you, friends and family are forcing you, and then you start doing it, that's when you will burn out. You understand? So that's how you need to choose your value. What am I doing this for? Who am I doing this for? Is it, is it the purpose of my life? If it's a purpose of your life, maximize it. In fact, live the living daylight out of your dream. That's what you should do. But if it's not your dream, if it's somebody else's dream, neither are you going to be happy, nor are you going to make this world happy by doing that. Okay? Got it. That Thank you. Sense. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Yes. There's a question here. Okay. We'll come to you in a minute. Can we get the mic here after that table, please? Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, I have one question. How do we cope with the situation when we are not able to uh, achieve the required result? Because we change ourselves, but the people around us don't change. Sure. So, the moment you realize that you are changing, people around you are not changing, the first thing you need to realize is you are not alone. You are among 7 billion people on earth. Right? Everybody in this world thinks that I am changing. Others are not changing. It's a constant challenge. My invitation to that is let it be like that. Forget about others. You do your best. Can you show up as your best person every single day? Do you have the energy to, and the motivation to do that? Just stick to that. What will happen? Sooner or later, you will inspire somebody. One person. Maybe half a person you will inspire. Maybe a quarter person you will inspire. But will you inspire somebody? You will. If you consistently keep showing up, you will inspire somebody. And that's the time that your change spirit has infected somebody. Let that infection happen. You have to be patient enough, consistent enough for that. And even if others don't pick up on your change, will your life be better if you change? Just do that. Stop looking at the world. Right? Give, make the world a better place. Don't force it. The only person you will control on, that's it. Just be peaceful with that fact. Okay? Like, I'm here, I'm speaking to 200 of you young minds. As much as I prepared hard for this presentation, as much as I had dialogues with many of you to figure out what should I talk about, as much as I'm spending all this time and interaction here with all of you, I'm going to leave this choice the moment I finish my talk on all of you, if you're going to change or not. I will not sit and worry how many of those 200 people made that change. I will believe, I will go with the belief, I will go with the trust that all of you will change. But will I force you to change? No, I would not. I'll only want to inspire you. And that's the way I will do it. Will I do it 200 year, days later? Yes. Will I do it 20 years later? Yes. I will continue to inspire people like this. That's all what I'll do. Because that's the only thing in my control. Happens? So just do your best. And I'm sure you will change the world. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, so my question is, as an HR professional, uh, our first responsibility is to make uh, our workplace a better place to work. So while shifting from Torab to Midas, is there any particular framework or regular practice that we as a HR professional can sure. suggest the people? Uh, awesome. So um, I will go back to the answer that we gave one of our colleagues right now. Those two words, the two Ds, design and dialogue. Please keep doing that. Design everything. And, and remember, even before you're a HR professional, you're a professional. Even before you're a professional, you're a human being. Bring the human being to work, right? If you're human, you will know what other humans need, always. 
the moment you become professional, HR professional, business professional, then you will have something else guiding you to make your choices. Be human first. In our world, we have tons of angels and this and that and the other. We have very few humans. Can you be another human? Will you be? Awesome. That's the change that you need to make. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I have a question. Thank you for the presentation. So you have keep uh, saying about the consistency. So tips you can give to maintain that consistency and how can I motivate to uh, my, my motivate myself for that consistency? Okay. So here's the here's a simple thing that you need to remember that what you need for your life is always inside you. Your truth is inside you, right? So when you lie down to sleep every day in the night, can you lie to yourself? Can you? Never know. Everything flashes by and that's what it is. I mean, I've not seen the deathbed, but people equally say this, that when you lie down on your deathbed, again, you cannot lie. So here's the fact that there are two times in our lives that we will never be able to lie to ourselves. When you're lying down to sleep and when you're lying down to die. Now, the sleeping moment comes every day. Can you take stock of your life? This is something my spiritual guru says to me and all of us who follow him. Uh, uh, and he's a great Kriya Yogi, that tradition. He says continuously that contemplate, contemplate. Yes? From these very lands, there is a, there's an amazing human being by the name of His Holiness Dalai Lama. Heard his name? What does he say? Contemplate, contemplate. This is what he says. You talk to any great leader, any great guru, this is what they will say. Contemplate. What are you doing? So if you contemplate what you're doing, your truth will always be in your sight. If you have your truth in your sight, you don't need anything to motivate you. More than enough. What do you want? What do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? That's what you need to know at any point in time. Helps? Wish you the very best with your life. Yeah, thank you. Let's take two last questions now. Oh, there are a few hands going up there, and somebody was trying to say hello from here. I couldn't make out who it was. Hello, good morning, sir. Where are so you first? I'm here. <laughs> okay. No, right. I'm speaking here from here, sir. Yes, yes, got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> What's your question? So, I'm Benita Kezi from Sarawagi Group. Hmm. It was a great opportunity to hear from you. I have a question for you today. So uh, today people, people are not being lawyer, lawyer towards the company. They are frequently leaving the company. Sure. So what are the practices we can apply so, uh, so that we can take a control over this? All right. So uh, the simplest thing for you to do is once you go back to your workplace, create some dialogues around this. Ask people what is the issue that they face while they work in the organization. It's a very simple question. And if you do that, you will find all sorts of opinion. There is a bunch of things people will say, everything from flexible working hours to workload to work-life balance to salaries to education, everything. Now, once you hear that point of views, all those point of views, you need to determine what will be the top two, three things that you can essentially change to arrest the maximum number of attrition. So it's a simple process. So again, go back to dialogue, understand from people, and then design your policies around that. So that's the simplest thing that you can do. At the end of it, would you still be able to satisfy everybody? No. And remember as HR professionals that many a times people are working in your organization not by design but by accident. They were looking for a job and this is the job that they found. They were not looking to work for your organization. They were not looking to work for the boss that they're working for. They were not looking to work in that profession that they were working for. They're there by accident. And when you have accidents, people also have realizations. When people have realizations, they will do one of two things. Either they will change or they will move out. When they move out, you will have attrition. So is attrition natural? Yes. How many of you found your jobs by accident? <laughs> many of us, yeah, yeah. So we did. So that's what happens with most professionals. We don't choose our profession, our organization, what we work, who we work for by choice. So some of this will happen. Helps, so go back. Create dialogues and then create the change around that. Okay. One last question before I wind up. One last question. Hello. Can you hear me? Where are you first? Here. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for a great session. Yes. I just want to talk about being more assured. So that's something I struggle with. Okay. Uh, you did mention being mindful, inquisitive, and okay. having deep, deep conversations. Okay. Uh, but even uh, I work as a training officer, and even okay. in my trainings, sure. I feel like I'm not assured. I keep asking my. Sure. Um, the people that I train, I keep asking them if sure. I'm doing okay. So I want to work on that. So I just wanted to okay. ask you. I think uh, for the last question for the day, we couldn't have had a better question. Thank you for asking that question. Now, here are a few things that all of us need to realize. And you may feel sad, bad when I bring these things up. But for most human beings, being unassured not liking who they are or not being sure of who they are really starts at childhood. It starts with the negative messages that many of us receive in our families. And then it keeps building up. Teachers, friends, up in college, university, many of us get bullied, call names, we have challenges that we experience. So these are the places where our self-assurance, our self-belief goes away. Our confidence goes down. Have you seen this happening? Yes? Any of us? Negative messages? Very common. And then what happens? Not everything is hunky-dory in life. You have failures. And those failures start creating challenges. Now, the most important thing that every human being needs to understand is, what's the emotional baggage that I carry in this situation? What's the hurt that I carry? I had read a beautiful quotation uh, many years back, and it said this, that if you don't heal what cut you, you will bleed on those who didn't cut you. Right? So most of us are walking around bleeding, injured, with the challenges and emotional baggages of our life, and most of us have not done anything to solve those. Some ways of solving those are simple, seeing a counselor, a therapist, a coach, a mentor, somebody to have a conversation with who can help you overcome that challenge that you carry, that hurt that you carry. And if the hurt is deeper, it's an imprint much deeper on your soul, then you need a deeper journey. Today's world, there are many people who are shifting to spiritual life and spiritual pursuits to improve their personalities, to improve who they are as their experience. Maybe that is where your answer is. There are some people who travel, see the world, learn. Some of these things heal you. But the point to your answer is, if you find that you are not assured, you're looking for assurance elsewhere, please find the source of that challenge and heal that challenge, whether it was a childhood experience or some failure of your life. But remember this one thing. If you're breathing, if you're alive and kicking, there is something good that you're meant to do for this life whether it's small or whether it is big. My hope is all of us make that. Do what you're supposed to do. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. It was amazing talking to all of you. Thank you. God bless you. Do well. Do well. Become the best person that you can ever become. Thank you. And for so, so, so many reasons, I'm sure you all will agree, we did not want this session to end, right? Yes, and my pleasure now uh, to request uh, Mr. Chandran to kindly join us on stage for this very important formality. Uh, I'm sure you all would agree. For me, at least, this has been one of the most, uh, so please, one of the most engaging comprehensive, closest to, I mean, close to reality and, uh, you know, session that I have ever attended in a professional sphere. And together, let us thank Mr. Chandran for firstly traveling all the way to Kathmandu, being with us.